The most frequent question I received in the comments section of my video about the sinking of the Yamato during Operation Tenichigo was, why would a 72,000 ton object floating on water be thought of as being unsinkable? The short answer was that her designers created a ship of such massive size that it allowed for unprecedented levels of armor and watertight compartments. Because Yamato was historically the most heavily armored ship ever built, it gave the Japanese a belief in Yamato's near invulnerability. When Yamato's wreck was discovered a few years ago, it gave a group of Japanese experts the opportunity to examine the wreckage and ultimately provide an explanation for how the U.S. Navy managed to overcome the super battleship's advanced armor protection system. A straightforward comparison of Japan's industrial capacity to that of its most likely future rival, the United States, was the basis for the Yamato class's enormous size. Compared to Japan, the United States produced nine times as much industrial output. Japanese naval strategists estimated that the U.S. could build three ships for every one that Japan built. In light of this, Japanese ship designers devised a solution after realizing they could never match the U.S. shipbuilding numbers. Construct a class of battleship big and powerful enough to be able to take on three American battleships simultaneously. As a result, the formidable 72,000-ton Yamato was created, equipped with nine massive 18-inch guns and 16-inch belt armor, providing an unmatched level of protection during surface warfare. Here's a graph showing how massive Yamato was in terms of weight in comparison to the largest ships in service with other navies at the time of her construction. The Colorado-class battleships, which were outfitted with eight 16-inch guns, were the most powerful in the U.S. Navy at the time. It would be necessary for the Yamato to be able to resist the 16-inch 45 caliber Mark I gun's ability to penetrate armor. To determine whether or not an armor plating is penetrated, three main factors need to be taken into account. First, the shell's size and velocity when it hits the armor. Second, the armor's thickness and quality. Thirdly, the angle at which the shell hits the armor. They had limited control over the first issue, but they were aware of the features of the gun they would be facing, thanks to their own battleships with similar 16-inch guns. An all-or-nothing armor configuration was used on the Yamato, where the most vital parts of the ship are heavily armored, while the remaining portions are either lightly or not armored at all. This armored area covering the vital parts of the ship was called the citadel, and in the Yamato's case, it would be the thickest ever constructed on a ship, well able to withstand the fire from 16-inch shells. With a thickness of eight inches, her deck armor was the thickest of any ship ever constructed. However, since the shells hitting the deck would strike at a more acute angle, the deck armor did not require as much thickness as the citadel. To increase its effectiveness even more, the main turret and belt armor were angled. The Yamato's designers calculated that this would make her invulnerable to direct hits from U.S. naval artillery. Yamato's designers believed that because her guns were the largest naval guns ever installed on a battleship, their extended range would serve as a defensive measure, disabling some enemies before they could get close enough to use their weapons against her. Torpedoes could be launched from ships, submarines, or aircraft, and were regarded as a serious threat to battleships. In addition to her substantial belt armor, the Yamato had a sophisticated anti-torpedo bulge that was meant to absorb torpedo explosions before they could damage the ship's critical inner hull. Experiments conducted on Yamato's belt armor revealed that an 880-pound TNT charge detonating against it would not penetrate. This charge was significantly larger than the 507-pound charge used on the U.S. Navy's new Type 14 torpedo. Furthermore, the ship was built with 1,147 watertight compartments to isolate flooding and damage to confined areas of the ship. This, combined with an advanced counter-flooding system, was supposed to allow the Yamato to withstand multiple torpedo hits and keep fighting. When she was designed in 1936, the full impact of aerial bombing on naval strategy was not fully understood. The prevailing doctrine continued to regard battleships as the pinnacle of naval power and the decisive factor in naval engagements. 
Aircraft were seen as auxiliary forces that were best utilized for reconnaissance and, to a lesser degree, torpedo attacks against enemy ships. Billy Mitchell's Project B anti-ship level bombing tests demonstrated how difficult it was to sink ships using level bombing. In fact, there was only one recorded instance of a high-level bomber hitting a ship at sea during World War II. Nonetheless, Yamato's designers provided extensive anti-aircraft defenses. 12 5-inch heavy AA guns and 24 1-inch light. AA guns were considered substantial at the time, but unlike other navies, the Yamato's main armament included anti-aircraft shells known as Sankaiden, a type of incendiary shotgun round designed to explode at a predetermined height set before firing. The designers of the Yamato did not necessarily believe she was unsinkable in the strictest sense, but they did intend for her to be impervious to the technology and naval warfare strategies of the time. Yamato sank to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean in April 1945, demonstrating the failure of her designer's ambition to make her unsinkable. This failure can be attributed to two major factors. The first was the result of vulnerabilities caused by limitations in construction technologies. The second reason is common to all military ship designers, the inability to see into the future. At the time of her construction, naval warfare technology and tactics were rapidly advancing, which was especially true during wartime. When construction on the Yamato began, torpedo-carrying aircraft were biplanes. However, by the time she sank, jet-powered aircraft were engaged in combat over Europe. Her designers failed to accurately predict the threats she would face in the future. The Yamato was designed with an advanced anti-torpedo protection system that was thought to be effective at the time of her construction. Despite this, torpedoes launched by U.S. aircraft during her final battle on April 7, 1945, were able to inflict critical damage on the Yamato, resulting in her eventual sinking. Wreck site evidence and testimony from Yamato's crew point to two factors that explain how the Mark 14 torpedoes were able to overcome Yamato's hull defenses. At the start of the Pacific War, the Mark 14 torpedoes had a major design flaw. They didn't work. By 1945, the Mark 14 Mod 3 had entered service. It not only went boom when it hit a vessel, but the warhead had been increased by 62 kilograms, and the TNT explosive filler had been replaced with Torpex, a highly volatile explosive that was 50% more powerful. This resulted in a significantly greater explosive force than Yamato's designers had anticipated. The sheer explosive power of these torpedoes could overwhelm anti-torpedo bulges and protective systems intended to mitigate such blasts. This was compounded by weaknesses in Yamato's armor caused by limitations in construction techniques at the time. When Yamato was built in the late 1930s, welding was a common practice in shipbuilding, but the technology was not as developed as it is today. At the time, Japanese naval engineers lacked the specialized tools and engineering techniques needed to weld 16-inch armor plates. Japanese shipbuilders had to rely on the well-established riveting technique in which they had extensive experience. The disadvantage of this method was that the joint strength was determined by the toughness of the rivets that held the plates together. Furthermore, holes must be drilled in the armor plating to perform the riveting process, which can compromise the seam's structural integrity. On December 25, 1943, while sailing from Truck Naval Base, the American submarine skate intercepted Yamato about 180 miles out at sea. A torpedo struck Yamato, ripping open a joint between the upper and lower armored belts, resulting in significant flooding. A crew member recalled how the explosion affected the Yamato. The armor remained intact, but the rivets were blown off, and water began to flood in around the joints. Yamato took on approximately 3,000 tons of water before arriving in truck for temporary repairs later that day. The Yamato's designers had not fully considered the impact of the blast effect an explosion has on its surroundings. An explosion creates a high pressure shockwave that radiates outward from the blast point, causing extensive structural damage, which literally shook Yamato's armor plates apart. The best estimate for Yamato's final battle is that between nine and 11, torpedoes struck her before the call to abandon ship was given. All but one of these hits were on the port side. 
a deliberate tactic to increase the likelihood of capsizing the Yamato, reducing the number of hits required to sink her. To combat this, Yamato had an advanced counter-flooding system in place to ensure she settled on an even keel, as well as extensive bulkheads to reduce flooding. However, by the time water began to wash up on Yamato's decks, the majority of these watertight compartments were gone. When the experts examined the wreck, they discovered a number of small holes in the deck armor that provided clues to this buoyancy failure. In the late 1930s, a new bombing tactic known as dive bombing was being perfected, which would transform naval warfare. This required an aircraft to dive directly at its targets to improve accuracy by simplifying the bomb's trajectory, allowing attacks on smaller targets, such as ships that were difficult to hit with conventional level bombers. Using armor-piercing bombs, dive bombers managed to breach Yamato's deck armor. The steep dive angle increased the likelihood of bombs penetrating the deck because they struck at a perpendicular angle, punching a hole in the armor and reaching critical internal compartments before detonating. The best estimate we have is that at least 12 1,000-pound bombs struck the Yamato, destroying the bulkheads and allowing flood water from the torpedo hits to seep throughout the ship, sealing her fate. Surviving crew members describe absolute carnage below decks, with raging fires spreading uncontrollably throughout the ship. The destructive power of these bombs was demonstrated during the Battle of Midway, when a single bomb dropped on the fleet carrier Kaga destroyed her. Yamato's anti-aircraft defenses were steadily increased throughout the war to combat the growing threat posed by aircraft. By 1945, the number of 5-inch dual-purpose guns had doubled to 24 barrels, while the number of 25mm anti-aircraft guns had increased from 24 to an incredible 132 barrels. However, while the number of guns had increased significantly, targeting technology had not improved. Unlike the United States, which had implemented cutting-edge radar-guided guns and proximity fuse shells capable of detecting the presence of nearby aircraft, the Japanese continued to rely on antiquated procedures. Yamato's anti-aircraft targeting system consisted of a man with a white stick shouting, shoot at that one. This explains why Yamato's guns performed so poorly, despite the amount of lead they could fire into the air. Yamato sank beneath the waves in one piece, but the wreck site now has debris scattered across a large area. The wreck condition, survivor statements, and modern recreation all point to a massive magazine explosion as the cause of this devastation. Yamato set out on her final mission with her entire ammunition stockpile, which contained over a hundred tons of gunpowder. When the fire spread to her magazine in her final moments, the decision was made to flood the compartment, but by then, the pumps that were meant to do that had already been destroyed. As she capsized, the heat detonated the explosives resulting in one of the largest explosions of the war, sending a massive column of smoke high into the stratosphere visible from Japan. The Yamato's sinking had far-reaching implications for the future of naval warfare. The most heavily armored ship in history was unable to withstand the might of U.S. carrier-based air power. The lessons learned from the sinking of the Yamato influenced post-war naval strategy, emphasizing the role of aircraft carriers and submarine warfare ushering in a new era of naval strategy and technology that continues to this day. If you liked this video, there are many similar high-quality videos on my channel.